As governor, what will vibrant and effective community-based human service delivery system look like to you? Uh, what it will look like, first of all, thank you very much, Karen, and thank you, Michael, and the Providers Council. I don't want to skip over that. This is uh, an important venue, and I'm happy to be here. What it will look like will be a sequ in, in a Cahill administration is a disciplined agency, group of agencies, that will work to provide services for the most needy people. It will be like small businesses, and the way that we will do it is we will incent them. Companies, we will incent the providers, we will incent the networks to run their operations so that they serve the purpose that they're set to serve. Not the purpose of the owner of the company, but the purpose of the people who are being served by that company. We'll do it in a fiscally responsible way, because I believe that we can meet our needs without overspending budgets. We have to. We have no choice to do that. Um, and we have to focus on the needs of the individual, the person who's disabled, the person who has drug or alcohol problems, abuse, um, and government must focus and make sure we cut out the middleman as much as possible to get the service directly to the needs of the people who need them the most. This is vital. This is what government does. This is the safety net. And if we don't get this done right, how can we do the other things that we need to do in government? So we will get the money to where it's needed, and we will make sure that we are as fiscally responsible as we possibly can so that we can spread that money around so that all the citizens of Massachusetts get the opportunity to be heard. Thank you. And going in clockwise order, that will make Deval Patrick next. Karen, thank you for the question. Thank you, Michael, and to the Providers Council for organizing, and thanks to everybody for coming out today, and for your service to people every day. Um, I want to second what, uh, what Tim Cahill just said in terms of uh, the emphasis on efficiency, on reaching people um, with their real needs, where they need to be reached much as possible in community settings. I think we have to be about delivering service through whatever mechanism makes the most sense for the client and the taxpayer. And increasingly, I'd like to see that service delivered through uh, uh, one-stop shopping, if you will. The community-based uh, uh, flexible support uh, pilot that, we have, uh, that we've initiated in this administration is very much about inviting providers to think of themselves outside of their own lane and outside of their individual uh, silos think about an individual client and what all of those clients' needs uh, are and how they can be met um, uh, collectively uh, or in the aggregate through one agency or through one agency taking the, uh, taking the lead. So uh, what I'd like to see is more folks, frankly, getting their services in the same way any of us would want their services, close to home, in the community, in simplified, in home settings, uh, uh, in ways that I think uh, ultimately support and encourage and celebrate the dignity uh, in each of us. Very good. Jill Stein, as governor, what will a vibrant and effective community-based human service delivery system look like to you? Um, I would, you know, agree that we need an efficient and largely community-based uh, system of delivery, um, but to me that's really not the um, problem right now. I think we need to respect that system and the people who've been doing such a good job with so few resources by actually funding that system. And that means restoring the cuts that have been made to uh, everything from uh, cradle to the grave, uh, child care uh, services for autistic families to be able to keep their kids at home, uh, special education which has been cut by about 40%. Um, support for seniors to be able to stay in their homes rather than have to go into nursing homes. There are so many good programs that have really been devastated by, I think, mistaken priorities on Beacon Hill. And the bottom line is, when you're told that there's not enough money, you're really being told there's not enough money for you. Because there has been enough money, $200 million, for example, with all due respect, Governor, that uh, this administration has chosen to spend, for example, on shopping malls and office parks, on the construction of these new uh, facilities that really, uh, I think, cannot credibly be uh, argued as developing our economy. And the list goes on, a full $1.7 billion in such uh, development expenditures that take money out of our tax base uh, that we critically need to support these essential services. So the question is, are we funding uh, the, those with the inside track, or are we funding Thank the you, people Jill. in our community? Thank you. Charlie Baker is Governor of Hubble, a vibrant and effective community-based human service delivery system look like to you? 
Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Michael. And thank you to the Providers Council. And thank you to the, for all the work that you do every day here on behalf of the common, some of the Commonwealth's most needy and complex uh, people. I, I think the most important thing when you talk about vibrancy is, uh, is another word, which is simplicity. Uh, I think the system somehow has to get to the point where most people believe everybody's more or less rowing in the same direction. Health and Human Services does wonderful things, but it's a very, very complicated, many times bureaucratic operation that it, for many provider organizations and for many clients and their families, the complexity of it alone appears to be profoundly daunting with regard to their ability to figure out how to access services and use services um, when they come in contact with it. And I think from a vibrancy point of view, one of the things we have to do is make the system a lot less complicated. Um, it should be the kind of system where people succeed uh, because of the system and not in spite of it. Over and over again, I hear stories from people I know who work within the provider community, who serve populations that are served by the provider community. And in many cases, their stories of success are stories of success where they succeed in spite of the way the system is structured and organized. And the other thing I would say, a vibrant system is typically one that's capable of change and capable of making adjustments. And one where people can decide that, you know, that was the way we used to do it, now we think we should do it this way. And instead of taking 10 or 15 years to figure out how to get from here to here, be able to move more quickly and in conjunction with the changing demands and capabilities of the system to serve people. Thank you.